So what really happened at that meeting? Joining me now is Donald Trump's newly minted campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway. So Kellyanne, let me just get some clarity since you were at this meeting. Does Donald Trump still support setting up a deportation force and removing the 11 million or estimated 11 million undocumented immigrants from America? Yes or no? So what Donald Trump said yesterday in that meeting ver differed very little from what he has said publicly, Dan, including in his convention speech last month in Cleveland. It's that we need a, quote, fair and, quote, humane way of dealing with what is estimated to be about 11 million um, illegal immigrants in this country. That was part of the discussion. It was a very robust discussion. I've seen him very animated in meetings like this where he is learning, he's taking notes, he's asking questions, he's receiving information. And the rest of the conversation, frankly, was about job creation, economic revitalization, the fact that um, small business growth among Hispanic and Latino Americans is on the rise. We talked about the, the inability to get access to capital for okay. many of them. We talked about home ownership as being very important, religion and family being very important to Hispanics. It was a very long, very far-reaching conversation, but nothing was said yesterday that differs from what Mr. Trump has said previously. Well, let me play something from uh, what Mr. Trump has said previously. Listen to what he said back in November. We're going to have a deportation force, and you're going to do it humanely Are and expensively. Are they going to ripped out of their homes? Can I tell you? They're going back where they came. If they came from a certain country, they're going to be brought back to that country. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to be. So does Donald Trump still support that, a deportation force removing the 11 million or so undocumented immigrants? What he supports, and if you go back to his convention speech a, a month ago, Dana, Dana, what he supports is to make sure that we enforce the law, that we are respectful of those Americans who are looking for well-paying jobs, and that we are fair and humane for those who live among us in this country. And so as the weeks unfold, as the weeks unfold, he will lay out the specifics of that plan that he would implement as president of the United States. Will that plan include a deportation force, the kind that he just you just heard in that soundbite and that he talked about during the Republican primaries? To be determined. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Donald Trump's tax returns. Uh, back in April, you said on CNN that you want Trump to be transparent. Let's listen. I want to ask you about this alliance between you first, uh, Kellyanne, between John Kasich and Ted Cruz, this alliance, shall we say, that Donald Trump is calling collusion. Is this fair game? Of Are they playing by the rules game. here? Absolutely. It's completely transparent. Donald Trump's tax returns aren't. I'd like to see those be transparent. Okay, now you're in charge of Donald Trump's campaign. Uh, given that, and given how you feel, are we going to see Donald Trump's tax return soon? So now that I'm on the inside, I know something I didn't know then, which is he's under audit and what that means. And he has said very clearly, and I back him up completely, that when the audit is completed, he will release the tax returns. And let me just say something about transparency. It comes in many different forms, Dana, as does accountability and as does truthfulness. And we can't imagine going up against a less transparent, less accountable, more sort of rigged and corrupt individual as our political opponent than Hillary Clinton. She's had a terrible week when it comes to being transparent and accountable, whether it's the revelations of the pay for play at the in the State Department that, that I know that you CNN is very much on top of and your reporting is Dana, as well as as well as the what happened at uh, the Clinton Foundation, and, which is a big and we are mess. and we are talking about that for sure. But in this particular uh, interview, and these questions are about Donald Trump, and and you mentioned the audit. Uh, according to his lawyers, the years 2002 to 2008 are no longer under audit. So, would you release those tax returns? No, I would not. And this entire tax return debate is somewhat confounding to me in the following sense: I don't think that it creates one job gets one more individual who does not have health insurance covered by health insurance, particularly under the disaster that has been Obamacare with these private insurers pulling out of our exchanges now and reporting billions of dollars of losses. What, what I think happened, I think people are most concerned about is how would a President Trump or how would a President Hillary affect their tax bill? Everyday life is becoming increasingly unaffordable for Americans, and they deserve the kind of relief that he laid out very strongly in his speech. If we want transparency, if, you, if we want specifics, the most relevant 
thing that people can look at is what is his plan for their tax bill to make everyday affordability, job security, and rebuilding the American economy, whether it's energy-based, whether it's bringing back manufacturing, as he has promised, as Governor Pence in Indiana has been able to accomplish on his watch. So we want Americans to look at the actual plans that affect them. You mentioned Hillary Clinton a few times. Uh, back in 2005, you had some pretty tough words for Hillary Clinton. Here's what you said. I'll put it up. Uh, the fact is that Hillary Clinton could not stand up to a cheating husband. So how in the world would she stand up to North Korea and some of our other enemies around the globe? Were you suggesting that someone who reconciles with a cheating spouse is weak? No, the context of that particular comment, I don't know what it was, but I'll stand by it in the following sense. I think people are looking for a strong, tough leader. And uh, many, many American women have to make the choice that she made or have to make the opposite choice. But the fact is that people are looking for strength and people are looking for leadership and people will peruse all types of decisions you've made throughout your life. Um, the irony, since I made that comment, Donna, the irony for Hillary Clinton is she was a United States Senator. She since uh, lost a presidential nomination contest to Barack Obama three years later, even though a majority of the voters were female in the Democratic primary that year. And, and as Secretary of State, I think she's got a, a record that's worthy of review. How, di how did she stand up to North Korea? Aren't they more strong now? Aren't they more capable as, as a power to do the destruction? Uh, what's happened with Iran uh, since she became Secretary of State? Why in the world did the State Department just reveal that indeed we did exchange $400 million it, for four hostages? We all know that was ransom. It wasn't what she said, quote, old news, what President think, Obama said, quote, manufacturing outrage. So we know, it turns out, we know exactly how she would stand up to those powers, and, and it's a very un unimpressive record. And as you said, you, you made that comment a long time ago, but it sounds like you're saying that those character traits that, you, that you're uh, discussing about her work as a state, at the State Department are the same that led to her staying with her husband? No, I'm not saying that at all, nor should anybody presume that I'm saying that. Uh, we don't need to conflate the two. What I'm saying is when people look at presidential But you did that back in 2005, they have so every just right, to get a sense of they where have we every are right. now. Well, you know, Donna, there are, min there are millions of women in this country who made the opposite choice, too, and that's the right my mother certainly did. She was left with a young child at the age of 26 with a high school degree, uh, not a Yale Law School degree, and she certainly wasn't first lady of the country and, and had to pull herself back up and find a way to support us, and God bless her, she did. So, no, let's not conflate the two, but let's really look at what Americans are seeking in the next president. They want leadership, and leadership is shown by doing things like heading down to Louisiana on Friday, as Trump and Pence did, to actually help people. You don't stop and say, gee, is it a swing state? Gee, should we go? You go where people need help. Uh, I, I thought that Governor Romney should have gone to New Jersey, for example, when we were suffering here after Hurricane Sandy. And so, so I'm glad that when you want to talk about being presidential or you want to show leadership, leaders show up where people in need are, and they hear them, and they help them. And you saw that on full display on Friday. That's a leader. And and we're going to talk about that later in the show, but I want to ask about the New York Times uh, reporting that Donald Trump convened a meeting about his campaign last week that included you, Steve Bannon, uh, and Roger Ailes, uh, who, of course, is the former chairman of Fox News. Can you confirm that Roger Ailes was in that meeting? He was not in a meeting where I was present. But I know that Roger Ailes and Donald Trump are old friends and that their friendship preceded Fox News, preceded a presidential run by Mr. Trump. Um, Mr. Trump has been a very successful businessman here in New York. He knows many people and talks to many people frequently. And I think, Dana, as even CNN's own Aaron Burnett and Brian Stelter said on a show where I, on her show where I appeared earlier in the week, they said, who wouldn't want Roger Ailes giving them advice? Uh, and, and that Brian was remarking how how kind and how helpful Mr. Ailes was but, to Brian so when just he was to, making the transition to CNN. So just to be clear, uh, is Roger Ailes actively advising Donald Trump at this point? He obviously has no formal or informal role with the campaign, but Mr. Trump speaks to many different people. Um, Roger Ailes is a genius when it comes to television, when it comes to communicating with people, but so is Donald Trump. I think what you saw this week is, is Donald Trump, the communicator, the connective tissue between him and people taking his case right to the people and it working. Kellyanne Conway, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you for having me, Jenna.